Now, most of you have never heard of Dave Keeling, which is just fine with me. And uh, don't take this personally, but being here talking to you is not my idea of a good time. <laughs> I'm here because I love this planet. I had a family, children, grandchildren, and I, I loved them deeply. Still do. So I can't stand quietly by and watch everyone and everything I care about, including our civilization, suffer a grueling, painful, completely unnecessary catastrophe. There's nothing inherently evil about CO2. Relatively speaking, there's really not that much of it in the air, way less than 1%. But ounce for ounce, it's very powerful stuff, like uh, greed. Greed, speaking of the 1%. <laughs> One day, uh, around the fourth grade, we got a new teacher. This teacher began telling us that the phases of the moon were caused by eclipses. <laughs> by the moon passing between the earth and the sun. Huh? <laughs> I was horrified. I raised my hand. She ignored me. Uh, finally, she kept going. I couldn't stand it. I stood up. I said, Miss Spencer, that's wrong. That's not true. You're talking about an eclipse. That's wrong. She gave me a look, told me to sit down and shut up. I always had a problem after that with ignorant people in positions of authority. <laughs> you know, like Congress, for example. <laughs> Remember the cigarette companies, Philip Morris and Friends, what they did in the 1950s? The tobacco industry created a phony research institute that create, issued official appearing reports about how there was no real evidence linking cigarette smoking with cancer, heart disease, emphysema. Nine out of 10 doctors smoke camels, remember that? Eight of them are dead. <laughs> These are from tobacco industry documents, and this is a real quote. Doubt is our product doubt. The industry's strategy does not require winning the debates it manufactures. It's enough to foster and perpetuate the illusion of controversy. Like greed, doubt is very powerful stuff. If you're looking for a reason not to believe something, try doubt. What's happening right now is that the Arctic is warming up twice as fast as the planet as a whole. In 30 years since 1980, we've melted 80 percent of Arctic ice ice that was in place for about 125,000 years. The Greenland ice sheet covers 80% of Greenland and it's melting. Unlike the Arctic ice, Greenland's ice is land-based. When it melts, sea levels will rise. Underneath the Arctic's permafrost is methane. Over a period of 100 years, methane is 20 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. Some of the permafrost is a mile thick, and it holds twice as much carbon as the atmosphere does right now. It isn't all going to melt at once, but one projection is we'll see a melting of about 10 feet of worldwide permafrost in this century. And there's also a tremendous amount of methane buried under the ocean floor. There's methane deposits there that have been held in place by permafrost lids. As the ocean warms up, these lids are beginning to leak. We're seeing methane chimneys now bubbling up off the coast of, the, of Arctic Siberia. What can we do? For 130,000 years, human beings anatomically identical to us, with brains and native intelligence on a level with ours, lived on this planet. One generation followed another, and nothing ever changed. And then the climate changed. It warmed up. Sea levels rose. People came out of their caves, enjoyed the stable, relatively benign climate we've taken for granted for the past 10,000 years. Within 5,000 years, we had writing. First cities sprang up. All the advances that characterize modern civilization came about. Learning, science, the arts, medicine. The new climate was stable. It's been remarkably, uniquely stable for the past 8,000 years. It's the only climate we've known on the only planet we have. And we've had a civilized world because we've had a civilized, stable climate and now we're in danger of losing it. It's said that humankind is on a journey from the caves to the stars. If so, it's been a journey fraught with challenges. 
And at each of them, we have overcome those who would lead us back to the caves, who would stop us, the fear mongers, the haters, the doubters, the liars. Today, it's the profiteers who would fill you with doubt and lull you to sleep, ask you to deny your very senses. We have the ability to face what confronts us. What is needed is the will.